How to make gold in classic vanilla WoW. Now, of course, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to make gold at max level in vanilla WoW. But not only that, uh, we're going to go class by class and explain the best ways for each of those classes. But before I get started and tell you about the classes, I just want to say the two best ways to make gold. There's two very the best ways to make gold in vanilla WoW, and it'll always be anything else. Uh, number one being in an item mafia. So. That specifically I'm referring to is Devil Sore. It's to be determined if this is going to be a thing on Classic WoW. Um, but at least on private servers, if you are in a Mafia like the Devil Sore Mafia and you're selling Devil Sore Weather, that is by far the best way to make gold in a vanilla WoW setting if you're a part of an item Mafia because the economy is, or you know, the supply the supply and demand factor, right? A lot of people want Devil Sore Weather for the Devil Sore Armor and they give a lot of gold for those Devil Sore Weather. At least when I was... Uh, for a brief period of time farming Devil Sword leather on my priest. Um, we sold Devil Sword for about like 20 gold per leather. Could be up to 25 gold. So keep that in mind that the Devil Sword Mafia stuff is by far the best way to make gold in Vanilla WoW. Uh, number two, you can play the auction house. This is something that each, you know, any most MMOs have an auction house. Um, even retail WoW right now, I think you can even make a lot of money playing the auction house. But this goes the same way in Vanilla WoW. If you have a bank alt and you just want to play the auction house and you're good with, you know, uh, buying the right things and like socks and all that uh, be a good idea to you know, play the auction house but from my experience top gold per hour in vanilla on average is not the crazy amounts that you see on YouTube videos uh, for me personally I would say that the best way uh, the top gold per hour in vanilla on average I would say and let me know if you agree is about 50 to 80 gold per hour I don't think and even 80 is, is kind of pushing it guys um, I don't think you're going to be getting more than that unless you're doing a Dire Maul Tribute Hunter solo run, which I'll talk about soon. But again, I would say about 50 gold per hour average is what you could expect in a Vanilla WoW if you're doing it properly. Um, it could be 70 to 80, up more than that, but not anywhere near 100, uh, depending on your server economy inflation of items. Um, but 100 G+, plus, you know, the only way you're going to get that, and we're going to talk about classes now, is we'll start with Hunter. Uh, Hunter's are able to solo the Dire Maul tribute runs, um, and that can net easily 100 to 150 gold per hour. It's going to be up to on private servers. They have nerfed this, so hunters can't do it because it is kind of breaking to the economy. That is a large sum of gold per hour um, for for a vanilla WoW server, right? So most private servers have nerfed this. It depends on Blizzard what they're going to do with that. If they're going to nerf it or not. Um, another way hunters can make gold is Marauden. They can farm Marauden. Um, you're going to need the scepter um, from the quest, so you're going to want to do orange and purple side. You can usually solo those at level 60 with good gear. And you're going to open the scepter and go into Marauden, and you're going to want to kill uh, Princess uh, Theradress. You're going to want to kill the Goblin Tinkerer. You're going to want to kill Rock Grip. And you kill those three bosses, and you loot all the items, and you just vendor them all after you're done. And now Warlocks. That's, that, that can probably net between 30 to 50 gold an hour. Uh, Warlocks. Warlocks also farm Marauding. They do the same thing as Hunters. So you're going to want to get that Scepter again. And, you know, that's that's by far, guys, the best way um, outside of the DM Tribute for Hunters. For Warlocks and Hunters, that's the best way to farm Gold in Vanilla WoW is farming Marauding. So you're going to might be a good idea in Classic to get that Scepter done from that quest as soon as possible. So as soon as you hit 60, you can start farming Gold at a reasonable, play, at, at a reasonable pace. Now, what about Warriors? For warriors, it's very simple, but it's um, you know, it's kind of a morally gray area. Some people are going to agree with it, some people don't agree with this um, when it comes to playing the game in the right way. But you have to admit that this is a very good way to make money, and that is reserving items. Now, as a warrior tank, uh, and you can you can also farm these dungeons with a really good tank set as you, if you're a DPS spec, in my opinion. Um, but tanks are in a high demand, right, for for groups. So usually, what tanks will do is they will reserve items they will reserve you know an item uh, maybe like a flask recipe or like boe sellables that drop in a dungeon or uh live strat and they they, they um they reserve the, the righteous orbs now you may be thinking who's going to join these runs well you'd be surprised at the private servers i asked myself for years why why people join these runs but they still do because they need the gear and this is essentially a very, very good way for warriors to make money. You can even make a make something of yourself by selling yourself as a service for 20 to 25 gold an hour or something like that. And you can actually, you know, sell your services to people as a tank. 
Um, but live strat, uh, living Stratholm is a very good way for warriors to make money. Simply due to the fact that they can reserve the orbs, reserve the sellables, reserve flask, any of the recipes in there, like the mage uh, water book, uh, food book, and the flask recipe and um, true faith vestments pattern off of the last boss. They also can do Dire Mall East jump runs. Now, what a Dire Mall East jump run is when Dire Mall is released, not a, when it well it depends on if it's at launch or not, but if not, a few months later, uh, Dire Mall East jump run. So the East Wing, uh, you you bring a healer friend and you just um, kill the bosses and you you know de the loot. You can even sell some of the loot to people if they need it. That's also a good way for hunters to make an extra or hunters and warlocks to make some extra gold. Um, and Marauden is selling the Blackstone Ring in Marauden because it's Prebus for a lot of melee classes, including, I believe, Hunters as well. And you can sell that for about 20 to 25 gold if you want. But yeah, in DME's Jump Runs, you can sell some of the gear for gold. Um, and you kill the last boss, and after the last boss in the back room there, there's some rich Thorium veins. And if you want, and obviously you're going to want to mine those, so in DME's Jump Runs... Usually, you're gonna want someone that wants mining, and someone wants the other he other person, the healer, wants enchanting, so they can disenchant any gear that they don't want. And then you can sell the large brilliant shards, the or arcane crystals from the rich thorium veins, and it's a lot of gold per hour doing that. Uh, mages, mages. There's various ways to farm gold. First and foremost, obviously, um, mages can easily sell portals to cities, and and they can sell food, mage water, and food. Uh, if you want to just sit in or a, a town and just sell things, simple things like that, you can. You can also farm BRD. I've seen a lot of mages farm the entrance, uh, a lot of the entry mobs, the BRD, um, depending on if it's nerfed or not. You can also farm the BRD arena area up top, which uh, paladins can do also. We'll talk about that. Um, mages can also farm the ZG cro crocs. There's uh, Mages can actually solo packs inside Zolgarub, the crocolisk packs. And if you, that's actually a really good amount of gold per hour, um, just AOEing down those crocs, selling the bijous and the glute you get from those crocs. And that's a large sum of gold you can get there when ZG comes out, especially considering that um, it's when ZG comes out, everybody needs reputation, and you can sell those bijous for a lot of money, right, for, for Zandalar rep. And also DM East, mages, uh, not only in DM East, there's the jump runs, there's also these lasher packs. When you jump down below, as soon as you enter DM East, that can be AOE farmed. And they sell a lot of uh, a lot of vendor grays that sell for a lot, and a lot of various herbs down there that you can sell. And uh, depending on the server, and depending on if it's nerfed or not on classic, you can make a fair amount of gold uh, farming DME slashers. It's one of the main main ways people farmed gold on Nostarius. It's up to debate if that was was like or not. Rogues, one of the most popular ways for rogues to farm gold is pickpocketing dungeons. Um, just very easy. You just go in a dungeon, you pickpocket all the mobs basically that you want, and then you just leave and reset the dungeon. Uh, the two most known dungeons, as far as I'm concerned, that people do this with are Blackrock Depths and Razor Fen Downs RFD. Now, we're going to talk about the hybrid classes. Uh, I put these all in one group because they're not as efficient as farming gold, in my opinion, from my experience, as the ones I just mentioned. And these classes are the Shaman, the Druid, the Priest, and the Paladin. Uh, in general, guys, for these classes, I would suggest picking up herbalism and just farming herbs all day in high-level zones. So, for example, Dream Foil, Plague Bloom, uh, Mountain Silver Sage, and of course you want to get the elusive Black Lotus, depending on if it's BOE or BOP. Regardless, even if it's BOP in vanilla, um, you might want to keep them to sell for a later date when they go B BOE, uh, because in vanilla, wow, Black Lotus are used for flasks, and during a certain patch, I believe it's the ZG patch, they usually are supposed to become BOE, which you can sell them. So keep an eye on that. They usually go anywhere from, depending on the market value, um, from 40 gold to 100 gold. So it really depends on what what your server uh, is in demand for them. Uh, farming dungeons with a tank is always a good amount of gold. Like if a tank is uh, farming dungeons all day, reserving items, they might give some of the loot to you if you want to if you want to uh, tag along with them. So that's an easy way to make gold. They're just farming dungeons in general as a healer. DME's jump runs, uh, any of the four hybrids can follow a tank or maybe even a rogue sometimes. The DME's jump runs, that's just an easy way to make gold there as a tag along with the warrior. And a DME's lasher AOE farm, just like the mage. Uh, a lot of the hybrids, I, I did this a lot on my priest. If you if you get bored, you just want to farm inside a dungeon with Holy Nova um, as a priest. But you can do this with any of the four hybrids, really. There's ways to do it. Uh, you can just farm the, a the lashers down below. And easy way for healers to make gold depending on if it's nerfed 
Uh, and druids and paladins, there's a couple ways that you can farm extra gold. Uh, for shamans and priests, not not so much from my experience. But for druids and paladins, there's also ways apparently that uh, druids are doing marauding now with hunters and warlocks. I don't know how vi uh, viable it is, but as from my experience and my uh, my research, it seems that druids can, for, to a degree, solo marauding. So that might be a good alternative for farming gold for you and paladins also have a way to farm the brd arena farm the mobs on top of the arena like mages as they, they have like a tank set and can use consecration and all that they can um farm gold that way too uh, but those are the most known ways from my experience uh if i missed one just let me know down below but uh each class there you go thanks and uh, i'll see you guys next time